Thoughts after a great win for the Grizz over Sac State as uh, you head to Portland this weekend for a, a tough game against Portland State. Thanks, Tapes. Uh, so in the, the Sacramento State game, that was as close to a complete game as we've played so far this year. Um, the atmosphere in the stadium was great. I thought the performance of our team was was uh, outstanding. It was just a great team win. I'm, I'm proud of our team and their ability to control the game throughout. So uh, moving forward, our team has created an opportunity with two games left. And now we have to make a choice um, about continuing to take care of business at hand or not. And I hope that we'll do that. Um, our group showed a lot of resilience and willingness to work to improve through the season. And I hope this week we can take another step forward. So on to Portland State with that. Um, Portland State does a great job. You know, Bruce has a good team over there, but you know, really on top of that, in terms of resources and, and things like that, uh, Coach Barney does a, a better job than anybody in the country in terms of getting, doing more with less. And uh, I consider them a really physical football team. Um, they're second in the conference in scoring offense, they're second in scoring in, uh, in the conference rushing offense, about 200. 30 yards a game or something like that. Um, quarterback was player of the week against NAU. He had six touchdowns in that game. Running back was the Big Sky player of the week against East Washington. He had six touchdowns in that game. Uh, I mean, I don't know if we have anybody on our team that has six touchdowns on the season. So uh, we need to have a, a great week of work and get prepared and play our best game Saturday. Questions? Uh, Cliff, Offensive Player of the Week, uh, went to you this week. Uh, you know, just talk about what was kind of going right against uh, Sac State on Saturday. Oh, it was just everything was clicking. I mean, we kind of came out slow in the first quarter, but then we picked things up. It was uh, O-line, but they did a great job protecting us back there and allowing us the running backs and, and receivers to get open and just make plays. And uh, we've seen you throw a lot of passes, but uh, currently averaging uh, 24 yards per catch, uh, one catch <laughs> on the season. What was it like uh, to make that catch from a junior on the sideline? Uh, it felt real good getting the ball to Keelan and a 97 yard touchdown. Just glad to get the points on the board and put the game in. Coach, I know every coach says that they want their team to improve as the season goes along and they want to play their best ball at the end. What has it been like to watch this team improve as the year go, has gone on and, and what would you point to that reason? Well, I, the reason is there's a willingness to get correction and get coached and then practice to, uh, to get better. And then, you know, most of the positions we stay fairly healthy. So those things have been contributing factors. Um, I think generally speaking, that's what happens with our teams around here. Uh, nothing's 100% of football, but generally it's how we do things. And then, I know you praised the way that this team has showed up and wanted to prepare uh, each and every single week, and you kind of you know, touched on it there a little bit, but a lot of people on the outside might call this sort of a, you know, a trap game with the one that's next and the one that you just had. So what's kind of the, the mentality going into this week? Well, we, like I said, we have a choice to make about continuing to improve and uh, take care of our business. And, and that's kind of what we try to emphasize around here on a weekly basis. And hopefully we will. Trajan, what about for you and, and the confidence level that you have of, of this team, you know, putting in a good week of preparation and, and overall just the, the feeling and the, the mentality going into this week? Uh, I think we'll be ready. I think, like my coach said, this locker room, we just want to get better and better every week, every practice, and I think we'll continue to do that. What's it been like for you, this run that you guys have been on? I think I interviewed you actually after practice, it was after the, the NAU game, so what's it been like just watching this team improve, and, and uh, what's it like been a part of that ride? Um, it's been good, like I kind of goes back to the last question, just uh, constant improvement each and every day, each 
watching more film, uh, practicing harder, and things like that. Everybody just really wants to get better and just making us grow as a whole. Bobby, just curious from your perspective, big thing in athletes, but you see fighters too, is just um, self-belief, confidence, things like that. Your team seems like you guys have that a lot, like you have confidence throughout the year, the past few years, you're always, just the self-belief is there. What's it like, I guess, coaching that? Like, how do you guys kind of instill that in this group to have that self-belief? Because it is a much more valuable part than maybe people realize. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, confidence is, is hard to get sometimes. A lot of times it's false bravado. If you have true confidence, then you probably perform better. That's what you're asking. Um, and I, I think a lot of it's the way our guys are trained. You know, they're trained in a certain way, and they know what they put into it. And they're educated on the um, X's and O's of football, but and so they know what they're doing. But then they also are trained in a way where they, they know they prepared, so they're confident in their, in their training. For both players, just that self-belief, what's it like having it and just, you know, always believing, never wavering, like even, you know, through ebbs and flows, like just speak to that self-belief and what it's like having that. We'll start with you, Trajan. Um, well, playing football, you gotta have that confidence that you're the best player and that you're gonna beat your opponent. You gotta win your one-on-one -on -one battles. So I feel like uh, we all have that and I feel like our teammates kind of bring that out of us as well. John, back to you. Coach mentioned the players that Portland State has that are stars on the offensive side. Just from what you know from Portland State, maybe past meetings, just what kind of stands out about these guys as you get ready for Saturday? Uh, yeah, the quarterback's a dude. Uh, we're going to contain him. He has a form as well. Um, and we have a good run game. Bobby, when it comes to Portland State's run game, anything unique or different that I'm they sorry, I could hear that. <clears throat> When it comes to Portland State's run game, anything unique or different that they do to get their guys the ball in space? Well, I. You know, they're persistent with it, first of all. Um, I think they do a great job with formations and such. Um, you know, the head coach is an old, old line guy. And he has a great understanding of, of uh, what he wants and how to manipulate the defense. I think they spent a lot of time on that. The offensive coordinator, A.C. Patterson, um, is an old, old line guy. So it's no mystery that they find good ways to run it. They just, they have some, some fundamental plays they like to hang their hat on, but then they've got a lot of diversity within the quarterback run game. So, um, you know, they're, they're a broad-based rushing attack that's hard to stop. That's why nobody's stopping them. You know, they've had some games where, it's, I mean, they've had some weeks where it's better than others, but, I mean, they, they've got, if you look at some of the things statistically and points and yards, half are just remarkable. So, uh, we got our hands full. Looks like they have multiple ball carriers, too, not just the quarterback, but maybe three or even four guys that get the ball out of the backfield. How challenging is, is that to prepare for? Well, it, it's it's really, you know, they're going to have a guy in the running back spot, they're going to have a guy in the quarterback spot, and then they're going to play multiple personnel groups around them, right? So, it's not so much who that guy is, other than the fact that the guys they've got at those positions are really talented. And they do a great job with formations and personnel groups. Um, the balance in, in multiple looks, multiple personnel groups is really difficult. And uh, fathers and sons on both sides of the sidelines. Yeah, I that. Isn't that <laughs> right. So, I mean, what do you think it's going to be like being on the opposite sideline as your son? Well, I mean, you know, he's gone from player to coach. He's a professional now. He's going to be trying his darndest to beat us, that's for sure. And, and Barney doesn't want Cooper at home at Christmas talking smack to him either, so those guys, they don't want to win. Uh, but, you know, they, they've got a pretty good window into what we do, and they got smart guys that can interpret that. So um, I would say that's advantage for the state.